take a look at US inflation data, which is coming out later, and whether this could be the nail in the coffin for equities. And then we're going to have a focus on Bank of America's flow show report. It's showing that people have been buying treasuries quite heavily over the past 37 weeks. And then the trading takeout today is focused on spotting regime changes. Where are regime changes? What are the key indicators for regime changes? And how can we benefit? Now, the only way you can get the best trading insights, education and analysis each day is if you're here every day. So hit subscribe so you can get your daily trading edge. Yes, later today, we have the US core PC price index, which uh, some people don't know this, but actually the Fed looks at this more than CPI. It basically uh, tracks the consumer a little bit closer and it's more robust in that sense. So when we're looking at, you know, what people are spending, where people's expenditure is increasing, um, actually, the US core PCE price index is more pertinent to Fed policy. And the expected is 3.7% with the low bet. So the low expectation of 3.5% and the high at 3.8%. The previous was 3.9%. So the expectation is in line with disinflationary uh, views or, or themes. I think that if we get 3.8, 3.9%, equities are going to go absolutely mental because what happens there is that we're looking at the, <clears throat> the rate path now shifted again, when for a little while now it's been concrete that there's not really going to be any more hikes. It just opens up the door for further hikes. And especially at a situation like this, where equities are already falling off, the volatility could increase. We saw the VIX sell off a tiny bit yesterday as the market declined, slowed a little bit. Um, but I don't think that is a sufficient case to say, oh, yeah, we're going to have a reversal. Um, I think if the US core PCE comes in strongly here, and it shows that it's overheating, the US economy, that is, um, then equities are going to, you know, absolutely have a horrible time of it. I think the 10-year yield is flirting again with um, with 5%. Let's have a look here. Let me just get a chart of the 10-year yield up. And so I'll switch over to here. So we're at 4 spot, 88% now. So we're 12 basis points <clears throat> away from 5%. And actually, just yesterday, we had touched a high of 4.988%, I think. 4.9, let's say 4.99%. Um, so, yeah, very, very close to 5% again. And there's a psychological level. I described this last week. Um, there's a psychological level here where traders are going to say, oh, Christ, we're at 5% now. What what goes on here? You know, do we de-risk completely? Um what happens? Is this the new normal? I don't think it's the new normal. I think systems have been very much calibrated over the last 15 years to focusing on momentum strategies, which are te which tend to be focused on, you know, partly to do with where the yield is, but also to do where order flow, et cetera, is going on. Um, and this is why we've seen, you know, even though the 10-year yield has been increasing so much over the last year or so, uh, this is why we've been seeing, you know, the market just still carry on up because there's a lot of algorithmic momentum strategies out there that just keep bidding in the market up. You know, they kind of forget about the, the backdrop of the economics, even though the economics are actually still quite good. We saw 4.9% uh, GDP growth last yesterday. Um, so the US economy is doing strong, but and this might actually give more credence to a rate hike if we see PCE come in. But those algorithmic strategies, I think, are what continually lets us see the bid get get bid up again or, or, or the offer lifted. Um, and so, yeah, the way that I see it is, is if we get PCE coming in strong, then that might revise the rate path, which is something to really focus on. And I think it will be very telling as well, because how equities and risk reacts off of this will dictate the extent to which people think there might be, you know, some sort of financial crisis or, or some sort of uh, recessionary behavior coming. But as of now, there's none. Um, so we'll see. And, and it'll, it'll be interesting as well on, on that note to see how responsive to the changing rate path the market is, because 
I would tend to believe at these levels where we're reaching peak, if we're not there already, at these levels, what we are expecting is if the Fed goes softer on rate hikes and if the rate part rate hike path completely evaporates so that we start looking at cuts more, that's worse because it's indicating that the economy can't sustain rates up here. Um, so play that off against the potential for rate hikes to occur. If the market rallies off of a strong PCE, which it shouldn't do, it's very paradoxical, um, then we'll see that, you know, higher for longer narrative sustained. But it could mean that because that gross growth prospects are okay and earnings have been okay, that the market can continue up. It's a very, very difficult one right now. We're right at that precipice of something can change the minds of, of the general market. Um, but we'll see. We'll see later today. Um, I'm leaning on PC being in this current environment, though, um, bearish equities. So this is the Bank of America's flow show report, and it's, it's for you know uh, people in the industry to to have a look at. This is what their clients see, and and what uh, you know other traders, at other banks can can see as well. Um, I'm letting you guys see it. <laughs> so the bit to really really focus on here is the flow to know, okay. And this is really, really important because it's going against the market narrative currently. So he says, uh, the largest weekly inflow to treasury funds at 9.2 billion since March. So the largest inflow in about seven months. Um, and it's driven by the largest inflow on record to long duration treasury funds. Now, long duration treasury funds are basically anything that's, you know, 10 years plus. So you've got short term, which is about you know, one week to, uh, to to one year. Then you've got the belly, which is one year to about five years. And you've got five years plus, which is sort of media. So you've got uh, one year, well, two year to 10 years, say, which is the belly, then 10 years plus is longer duration. Um, so things like TLT, which is a US ETF, is averages 20 years plus in duration. So he's, they're effectively saying that, TLT has been bought up quite heavily here. And Bill Ackman, who is the, the CEO and fund manager at Pershing Square, he closed his treasury short just this week. So there's definitely some kind of covering going on there in terms of the market getting bid up after a large position has been closed out. Um, but this is quite important because people are betting here effectively on rates not going higher. It could be a dangerous bet because, of course, you know we're seeing the 10-year up at 5%. But I don't think it's stupid. I think now the risk to reward is skewed again towards bonds getting bought, um, especially with some of the the kind of murmurs that are going going on around the world with China being an issue. You've got some stuff going on in Europe with Germany being completely kaput. Uh, the UK is not doing amazingly, so things are sort of slowing down. Things aren't as good as they could be. Um, and so I, I, I'm not surprised, basically, that treasuries have been bought up here. And this is something to note in context of what I was talking about yesterday with the uh, Fed Funds futures curve, because that shows effectively what the market is pricing for interest rate changes and interest rate hikes or cuts. Um, and it seems like, you know, the same bet is going on in the treasury market. There's one big problem, though, is that there's a massive oversupply of treasuries from the US Treasury. So they're actually dumping a lot of treasuries on the market, which is why we're still seeing yields go up predominantly. It's to do with what's going on with a government department, basically. Um, and this is one of the conundrums that is making the trade not as easy. Because if the Treasury is dumping a lot of supply on the market, then the yields are going to keep going up, no matter how many people are buying the actual funds or, or bonds themselves. So it's a very, very tricky one currently. Um, but I, I do like bonds. I think bonds are, especially non-US bonds right now. So if you're looking at, say, UK gilts, I think they're they're, they're a good tax-free. You can get to gilts tax-free. Talk to your tax advisor. Good tax-free way of uh, getting in on the the, the increase in, in bond price again, in my view. So you'll notice this week that I've been talking a lot about interest rates, <clears throat> where the Fed funds curve is, where treasury yields are, um, and then relating that back to the economy. 
And it's because I really want you to digest and understand that these are the points at which regime changes are occurring. When interest rates, after such a, a strong cycle, start to peter off and the hike expectations sort of fizzle out, this is when we can start saying, okay, things are about to turn. There's going to be a change, which is also why I wanted to focus on the PCE today, because if that inflation data, data comes out strong, then it shows that hike expectations may come back into play. But Regime changes always occur with interest rate expectations. That is the key thing to understand here. Whether they're a cut or a hike, it doesn't matter. As long as the direction of interest rate expectations changes, that is pretty much the only thing that will cause a change in a regime.